Tempted by child porn as a Christian? Is it possible? Letter in the mail. There's no return address here, so right there it is. <clears throat> Not going to read the whole thing here because... Um, I guess I'll read it. It's not that long. Um, Hello, Brian. Thank you for your ministry. I wanted to write you for a very long time. I'm in my 50s. I got saved around before 2000. I have always had issues with porn since a child when I discovered magazine in my dad's room. Magazines in my dad's room. I realized in late 90s I needed a savior. I knew I was a sinner headed for hell. I realized Jesus came and died for me and my sins on the cross. After I got saved, I was on fire for Jesus. That lasted only a year or two. In early 2000s, I got a computer and stumbled upon, quote, very bad porn and was hooked. Before that time, I was not interested in this type. Okay. You can see the letter right there. I'm not making any of this up. Okay. <clears throat> you probably know the bad kind I'm speaking of. The guilt over the years has been rightly so, very heavy. I've probably done it well over 1,000 to 1,500 times. I'm ashamed and have never told a soul. Only God knows. I've gone at times weeks without looking at it, but then I'm always tempted, my fault, and do it again and again. I felt feel felt dirty. If I'm truly saved, why do I fall into this type of porn after getting saved? I doubt my salvation often, but other times I do not. I know Jesus knew I would do this after, but at the same time, why? If I have the, and I'll show this. You see the emphasis there and everything else. <clears throat> if I have the Holy Spirit in me, how can I even think about self-pleasuring? I won't say the word. I don't want to go to hell. I feel God is very angry with me most of the time. I repent, feel guilty, feel guilt and shame each time, but keep going back to it. I take full responsibility for it. A few times I almost died, God getting my attention. Um, I remember your video on that topic. Lately, I've been ge getting better and not looking at the porn. I know I've got to stay in the Bible and avoid circumstances that I get put myself into, but tempted in the first place. And to be tempted, but in, in to be tempted in the first place. Brian, please, please, please do a video on this topic, the specific to topic. I can't understand, can't fathom a lot of Christians doing this. Maybe I'm wrong. God bless. P.S. How can a Christian fall into this type of uh, worse sin after being saved? That's what I don't understand. Thank you, Brian. I hope and pray you can do a video for me and others on this. I want to be with Jesus. I want to serve God. I want to do well, but I'm afraid and ashamed also. I think God is very angry with me. I still read my KJV. Watch yours. And other videos, others' videos, drop off tracks, pray for others, etc. Pray God hasn't given me over to a reprobate mind. Okay. Again, the letter. I don't normally show letters, but when they're not personally addressed and he asks to do a video on this, I'm showing the letter. Just to show proof of the kind of things that I have to deal with. Okay. Now, just to make it very clear... He did not say anything at all about it being child porn. I am assuming that he means child porn or she or whatever else. I am assuming that this person means child pornography because that would be the what I would classify as the worst of the worst. Um, <clears throat> and we're going to talk about this in this study here. Luke chapter 17. Um, Some things I need to say about this whole sub subject here. Luke 17, verses 1 through 3. Then said he unto the disciples, It is impossible that offenses will come, but woe unto him through whom they come. It were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck, and he cast into the sea, than that he should offend one of these little ones. Take heed to yourselves, if thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him, and if he repent, forgive him. I'm going to be rebuking the writer of that letter. And all of those out there that are watching pornography. Um, if you get into pornography, pornography is a trap. 
Pornography starts off softcore, um, and then it gets worse and worse and worse to get your thrill. And you get into sicker and sicker things. That's why you have to get out of it. That's why you know it's a sin. All sin is negative. All sin gets worse with time. You start out drinking a beer. Then you go to maybe or wine or something like that. Then you start to get into harder type of liquors and things like that. And eventually you're just a total complete drunk. You ruin yourself. Um, you start out with cigarettes and then you get into vaping and then you get into all kinds of other things. And you, you know, it gets worse is what I'm saying. You start out stealing a little stick of gum or something or a piece of candy from a store. And before long, you're stealing from your neighbor or whatever when they went away. Sin gets worse. Okay. So I have to ask five questions. Okay. That you need to, I'm going to ask them. I'm going to say them. I'll write them on the board here. But you need to re examine yourself and say, ask yourself these questions. Okay. Okay. Question number one. Are you a false convert? You have to think about that as a possibility. And I'm writing, I'm saying this to this guy here. Um, there's a trespass here. There's sin. Maybe you're not my brother. Maybe you need to take a rebuke here and say, and consider some things and say, maybe I'm not saved. So let's look about that. 2 Corinthians chapter 13. 2 Corinthians chapter 13. This is how you start out. You have to diagnose the problem. My vehicle's not starting, okay? Does it have the lights come on? Does it have a battery? That's good. Does it have spark? Does it have fuel? Does it have, is the air, you know, filtration thing clogged up? Or is it in gear and there's some kind of a little thing that's keeping you from starting it? You diagnose a problem. That's what we're doing here. 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 5. Um, Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates. But I trust that ye shall know that we are not reprobates. I trust that you viewers out there can know that I am not a reprobate concerning salvation. Um, I have had victory over the sin of pornography in my past. Um, and... I will tell you right now, it never got anywhere close to the thing of child pornography. Um, nowhere close to it. And I'm not going to get into descriptions. Of, hey, let me tell you, this is what I used to look into. I don't do that because I know that stuff can trigger things in your mind if you're still struggling with this sin. All right. I'm not going to talk about any kind of graphic descriptions or whatever else. But I remember there were times I'd get on websites and I'd see, you know, bestiality or necrophilia, which is, you know, fornication with dead bodies. Um, and you know, that it was in the sidebar or whatever else. And it was always kind of a, Ugh, you know, that stuff's weird. Why would I ever look at that? And I can say, I never saw any kind of a link or anything else to child pornography. Um, and I thank Lord, I never got anywhere close to that stuff. Uh, to me, a child going after children is a reprehensible thing. Um, you're getting into an aberrant form of perversion that makes literally no sense at all. Um, and it's not normal. It's not a normal fleshly thing. Uh, a man lusts after a woman. Okay. And there are different things that you can see there and whatever else women and the, but a man, a natural lust going too far is going to involve women. When you start to involve other men, um, you're getting off into some really dangerous territory there. But when you go into the really aberrant stuff like child pornography, Again, the letter did not say child pornography. Maybe it just means sodomy. I don't know. But when you get into the thing of child porn, uh, you're dealing in a different level. Okay, so you need to really examine yourself and say, you know, the letter said that he got saved um, back in the year 2000. Um, I'd question that. If you're getting into child pornography, I'd really seriously question it because the Lord uh, has a special hatred for people that get into that kind of sin. Um, you really need to examine yourself. Um, because I think you're in very serious trouble. Number two, another thing, I, I'm not trying to get psychiatric here, but um, this is a big part of it. Number two, a question that you need to ask yourself, because I've met people um, that have gone through this, uh, particularly Roman Catholics. This is a very big thing with them. Um, and that is, were you molested as a child? Because that leads to all kinds of weird, sick stuff that happens later on in life. 
you feel that your childhood was robbed and you didn't have a real childhood so that you should be able to go and do that to some other child so that you can kind of take their innocence and you know it gets really weird does weird stuff to the brain but um you say well i can understand then why they would do it no no that's not justification um second corinthians chapter five I find a lot of the stuff that deals with perversion in the New Testament is either in 1st or 2nd Corinthians because they had a lot of perversion problems in those the churches that lived in Corinth. The people, in other words, not the buildings. 2nd Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 through 21. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, there's a conditional clause, if, very important. He is a new creature, old things are passed away, behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation, to wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him." You get saved, things change. Period. I don't even want to hear about it. Well, you know, I'm still struggling all these years later and things with pornography. Um, that's a problem. That's a big problem. You should get victory over that sin. And you better, you know, um, <clears throat> say it this way. Uh, there's a local spring here in the area. Okay. And really good, clean spring water a lot of people go to it and whatever else. And I'm being serious. This is how we get our water system, our water, you know, for everything. Uh, and all of a sudden I find out that somebody put some poison in it. Just a few drops. It's not much. It, you know, it give you cancer over a little bit of time and whatever. Well, you know, I guess I'll just keep it around. Oh, they put a little bit more poison in it. A little bit more. Well, you know, I, I don't know. No, you have to say, oh whoa, wait a second here. I need to get this out of my life. I need to go do something else. If you have a problem with pornography, you cannot truly function as an ambassador of Jesus Christ. You see, because the internet is making records of everything that you look at, all of a sudden, you know, I have to kick with my foot, kick the door over this way. Uh, what's going on? Uh, open the door, please. What's going on, officer? We tracked your computer. You have child pornography on it. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, you caught me. Okay, come on in. Let me tell you about Jesus while you're here. <laughs> I don't think so. No police officer is going to listen to you. Oh, you're an ambassador of Jesus Christ. He's committed to you the ministry of reconciliation. No, that's okay, pervert. I don't think so. Okay, um, you can't keep doing that or else you are finished. And if it's been years and years, then you have a serious problem. I've put out stuff on how to get rid of the whole pornography thing, the addiction to pornography. I've been putting it out for years. And if you out there are watching me and you still are struggling with pornography, there's some serious problems there. There's some real serious problems. You need to get victory over sin. But there are things that were done to me when I was little and think, okay, you're a new creature. Did Jesus Christ save you? Has the Holy Spirit moved into your body? then why aren't things different? Why haven't things changed? I just am not feeling much love from you right now. No, that's, that's absolutely correct. I don't love wicked sinners that call themselves Christians and seek to tear down the body of Christ. You're a poor example. If you are even saved, which I question, the writer of that letter, and I question others out there, I know that some of you are watching pornography. And you come out and, oh, I'm just struggling with things. A lot of questions about you. You need to get control of that thing. You need to get victory over that sin. You better make it happen. Especially when you're getting into really deranged type of things. You go after little children, you're a sick individual. Let me tell you that. And I'll tell you right now, I'm going to the prison on the day that some pervert comes up and puts his hands on my son. I'll go wild. You want to see a berserker, Nordic berserker? I'll go berserk. Some pervert comes up, oh, hi, you know, I'm, I'm some kind of transgendered. I don't know what I am, and I'm going to read your child a story or something. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. No, I don't think so. 
I thank the Lord that I'm living in the middle of nowhere and we don't go out of many stores and things like that. I thank God for that. Because if I lived in the city and some wicked, disgusting pervert came up and put his hands on my son, I'd go nuts. And the thought of somebody saying, I'm a Christian, and you can look at a little child without their clothes on and get a thrill of that? Enjoy the fires of hell. Your damnation is just. Okay? Number three. The third question that you need to ask yourself. I mean, you got, you got a serious sin problem. You understand that? You want to go listen to some panty waist out there that's going to, out there for your money and whatever else? Once you can come to his little church building, he wears skinny jeans and whatever else, and he's going to be gentle and not want to offend you, and we all have problems. That's not this ministry. You're in serious sin, and I'm going to kick you across the room. And I wish I would have had a preacher that would have preached this way to me back when I was messing around. And I never got into the real sick stuff. I had more character than that. Number three. Here's another big one. Something a lot of people do and they don't even care about it. And that is, are you allowing devil spirits into your life? Oh, I think that's funny. Oh, 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 I like my rock music. I like my Hollywood movies. I like my, you know, occult talismans and, and dream catchers. And I like my tarot cards and I like my Ouija board. And, and I have a copy of the Church of, you know, or the Satanic Bible and some witchcraft books and spell books and things. But it's a big deal. Come on, don't be so judgmental. Don't be so, so narrow-minded and... You're allowing devil spirits into your life. Now, I don't believe a Christian can be possessed with the devil. I don't. Um, I've been back and forth on that issue over the, over the years. But ultimately, no, I don't believe that you can. If the Holy Spirit's in there, you're not going to have a devil spirit come in. You're sealed. Okay? But uh, influenced by devils? Attacked by devils? Absolutely. You allow that stuff around your home and, and things like that? Uh, yeah, you're going to have problems. 1 Timothy chapter 4. First Timothy chapter 4. And there's so many scriptures we could go to in this study. I'm just trying to keep it short and to the point. First Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 through 3. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. Forbidding to marry. Men going their own way, you know. And they're actually what they mean is men going to the internet and, and playing with themselves, looking at a bunch of filthy, disgusting stuff. You need to hate that stuff. You know, when I got victory over the whole sin of pornography years ago, God developed in me a holy hatred for it. You're not tempted to go to something when you hate it. And it's just, oh, wicked, vile, disgusting people. It's the way it should be. But notice it says there that they depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy. I don't know who this is that wrote this. I have no idea. This could be some atheistic devil trying to get a laugh. I, I don't know. But if this is actually somebody that claims to be a Christian, I think you're speaking lies and hypocrisy if you're looking at child porn. Now, maybe they're saying, oh, no, I wasn't saying that. I was just saying... You know, something a lot less than that. But, you know, I'm going to go with the thing of child porn because it's, that's the way the letter looks. But you sear your conscience with a hot iron. Just fry it. What about the child's feelings? Being forced to pose for the pictures and, th and do sick things. What about them, the little children, little innocent mind of a child? I wish <laughs> one of my greatest prayer requests, well not request, but I, one of my things that I wish that the Lord would allow me to do, just let me have this country for about 10 years or so. Let me be the dictator. Absolute authority. My word is law. I'd put every single one of these child molesters to death. And it would be a violent death. Not torture, because I don't believe in torture. Uh, Christian, you know, 
It's not a torture thing with you know, New Testament, let's torture people or something. No, that's Catholic, okay? I'm not an, into torture. Um, but execution, yeah, it'd be violent. It'd be bad. You mess with little children, you are a sick individual. And if you get pleasure somehow over little children, you're very sick. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 through 6. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ, and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. You're supposed to get revenge at the sins that messed with you in the past. We'll see about that here in a little bit. But you're supposed to get control of your thoughts. There's supposed to be a spiritual thing there. And if you're allowing all sorts of satanic uh, items in your home, it's going to mess you up. Oh, I'm a super Christian, man. I can, I can watch TV. I can watch Hollywood movies. I can listen to rock music. It doesn't bother me, man. We have family movie night. We go and we get Hollywood movies. You're a fool. You're an absolute fool. You're opening up doorways for the devil to get into your home and mess with you. Absolute fool. Well, I have to stay on the internet. Not if you're a porn addict. Get rid of your computer. Get rid of your, your smartphone and all the other stuff that connects you to make it easier for you to go and look at this filthy stuff. You see, if you really want to have a solution to your problems, you can do it. But a lot of people are just content to just continue to drink some of that water with the poison in it. Just a little bit. A little bit doesn't hurt. I know when to quit. I can just kind of stop and, uh, yeah, uh-huh. There's going to be a lot of people in hell. A whole lot of people. And if you truly say, well, I love Jesus and I, I really love God and things, then you'd want to stop. Oh, but brother, I want to stop, but I just can't. Oh, yeah, okay. I, I'd like to stop punching myself in the face, but I don't think I can, brother. I don't know how to do it. How do I stop punching myself in the face? Stop punching. How do I stop looking at pornography? Stop being on the internet. Are you really that stupid? Well, there's a store locally I go to and they have magazines there. Then stop going to that store. Well, there's a, a adult you know, club and I have to walk past it on the way to work. Then go out around it. Stop the sin. Well, I think that there are others that struggle with it too. You're not supposed to compare yourself to others. Compare yourself to the book. Compare yourself to Jesus Christ. Do you have his righteousness imputed to you? Do you have the Holy Spirit of God within you? Then what are you doing messing with these types of sins? Trying to justify it. And I've had perverts come along to this ministry and, oh brother, I'm struggling with things. I'd like to talk to you and, and whatever. And all of a sudden they're just sodomites, dirty sodomites trying to get me interested in them. Like I'd be interested in a man. Mentally, just insane, stupid people. Radical towards sin. You don't coddle it like a little rattlesnake, little baby or something. Oh, I'll just hold on to it and he'll love me. And think. No, get rid of it. Get out of your life. Number four. I'll just shorten this one a little bit. This is another one that a lot of people uh, have a problem with which I've been talking about here. How long has the process of sanctification been in your life? You get saved, you get born again, yeah, you're going to have some things. You're going to have some skeletons in your closet and some, some cobwebs and some poisonous things and whatever, and you need to get that stuff out of your life. All right, It's going to take a little bit of time. I have grace for people. But if you're saying the year 2000 and over the next two years you were good and then after that you got into whatever else, uh, that's 22 years. Messing around with, assuming again, child pornography for 22 years and you want to make me think that you're saved? I don't think so. I seriously don't think so. And I'll tell you what, you start getting into this stuff, you start to get into the real sick, dark stuff that's devils, um, 
your chances of getting saved are very slim, especially if you've been a professing Christian the whole time. Very slim. You know, people have this funny notion that God is just this big teddy bear up in the sky and he just loves you no matter what. His love is unconditional. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. There's a time when your heart has become so hardened that the Holy Spirit says, I'm done with you. You are a vessel of wrath. I watched over you and I endured with much long suffering. I watched what you did for years and years and years. And then I said, that's enough. Over. It's over. You wicked, vile, filthy sinner, you. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. You're going to be standing before a perfect being that knows every thought that you've ever thought, that knows every sin you've ever done, everything you've done in secret. He knows it, and he's going to bring it up in judgment. Where's the fear? 22 years, and there's no fear? Galatians chapter 5, verse 16 through 25. See, I'm giving you the scriptures. I'll give you the scriptures. It's not just me ranting and raving here. We're going to the Word of God. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. This I say, then walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Well, you'll, you'll struggle with it. You know, uh -huh. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh, with the affections and lusts. Well, not me. I haven't really crucified it. Then you're probably not Christ's. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. You're provoking one another when you're comparing yourself to other people. Finally, um, Porn addiction here is what I'm talking about, lower level, you know, stuff that would make sense, at least if you're a guy looking at, at you know, women or whatever else, the filthy harlots that would actually take their clothes off to pose for that disgusting stuff. That's the kind of woman you're looking for. Yeah, you got problems. But uh, this advice is for people that are at that lower level. Uh, child pornography, necrophilia, bestiality, you get into that real sick stuff, um, I don't really know if you can do this, to be honest with you. But I'm going to have some grace for people and give you one more uh, piece of advice here. This is what I've been preaching for many years. And this is an important thing with any type of addiction, but in particular, the addiction of pornography. And that is you need to replace porn addiction with godly addictions. Okay. <clears throat> First Corinthians chapter 16. Again to the book of Corinthians. Well, I thought you'd understand and take it easy on my sin. No, because my life is not the standard. This book is the standard. 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 14 through 15. <clears throat> that, your, that all your things be done with charity. I beseech you, brethren, ye know the house of Stephanus, that it is the first fruits of Achaia, and that they have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. Get busy working for the Lord. There will be no time for your wicked pornography addiction. Get busy. Um, you say, but, you know, I just keep going and I look at the internet and whatever else, uh, then get rid of the internet. As I've said, 
And I've had guys write to me, brethren write to me, and they say, Brother, I've been struggling with pornography for years. I can't get victory over it. I'm sending you this last email or sending you this last message. And after that, I'm destroying my computer because I want victory over this sin. I hope God gave it to them. That's what it takes to, to be a man. I'm going to make a stand now. I'm not going to wait. I'm going to get this thing done now. I have a problem. And I'm not going to go to some little counseling thing and, oh, let's talk about our feelings. When did you first begin? And, and uh, No. Be a man. Get control of your life. 2 Corinthians chapter 7. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 9 through 11. Now I rejoice, not that ye were made sorry, but that ye sorrowed to repentance. I pray that you sorrow to repentance after you watch this. I pray that I ruin your day, your week, your month. I pray that I ruin it for you and you have no joy after watching this. And you have some serious doubts and some serious fears. And that that sorrow leads you to godly repentance. And not just the sorrow of the world. For ye were made sorry after a godly manner that ye might receive damage by us in nothing. I'm not at all worried about the advice that I'm giving right now because I won't damage somebody that's real. All I'm going to damage is the self-esteem of some pervert out there that really doesn't want any answers to their sickness. If you're a real man and you're saying, I'm really struggling with this stuff, um, you're going to receive damage. You're not receiving any damage from me. I'm giving you the advice. I'm giving you the kind of counsel that you need. Radical action. Verse 10, for godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation not to be repented of. You will get victory. You won't have to go back and repent over and over and over again. You'll get victory and say, done, it's over. But the sorrow of the world worketh death. Oh, I can't believe he preached that to me. I just don't understand. I could, he's not loving to me. I, just don't, I don't know how I could do it. I should probably go get some medication so I can just kind of, you know, get my sorrows away. And, or I just can't take it anymore, you know, or something like that. That's the sorrow of the world. It worketh death. I'm trying to help you with your problems. You want to end your life because you're stupid and you don't want to get rid of this wickedness? That's your problem. I'll see you at the great white throne judgment before you're cast in the lake of fire for all of eternity. But you can't continue with this, especially when you get to that level, like the letter I read. Verse 11, For behold this selfsame thing, that ye sorrowed after a godly sort. Here's the proof. What carefulness it wrought in you. You'll be careful. You won't fall back into it again. You'll look and you'll say, Hmm, am I allowing devil spirits into my life? I'm just going to have a burn festival here. I'm going to go through my house and anything that's wicked, anything at all that could be allowing my flesh to be weak, I'm going to burn it. I'm going to get rid of it. Go fanatical. Become a zealot. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. It says in the book of Revelation, chapter 3. What carefulness it wrought in you. What clearing of yourselves. Show the internet, you know, records and things that there's a clearing of yourself. If you have bookmarked websites or whatever else, you go in there, you get rid of those. You go in there, you burn all your magazines, you burn all your filthy stuff. You stay away from the stores where you used to frequent, where you'd buy the wicked magazines. You stay away from those websites. You just get rid of your computer, whatever else. Make a change. So if you ever have law enforcement come after you for the porn stuff that you've been looking at, you can say, here's when I changed. You can see from this date forward, I never looked at anything else. Clear yourself. Yea, what indignation. Do you have indignation? I do. If I ever see some guy trying to take pictures of a little child or something or whatever else, some kind of child porn thing, that guy's going to be dead. I'll tell you that. Well, you might go to prison for it. Whatever, God will have to protect me. But if I'd ever find out that something like that's going on, or like I said, some idiot tries to mess with my son, uh, it's not going to go well for them. I will go wild. Talked about having your uh, millstone hanged around your neck and drowned in the depth of the sea. Yeah. Yea, what fear. This type of thing should make you fear. Yea, what vehement desire. I want to have vehement desire to serve the Lord. 
I fear God. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and I have vehement desire to serve Him. Yea, what zeal. Yea, what revenge. Wouldn't it be something if you uh, were able to say, I'm going to fight hard to get pornography taken down off the Internet? That'd be good. I'm going to go track that store where I used to go and get the magazines. I'm going to try to go in there and witness and say I was a rotten, filthy, disgusting swine when I was coming in here and buying these magazines. I just got saved, and I'm not ever coming back in here again. And you're wrong for selling this stuff. Make a fool out of yourself. Have the guy laugh at you, cuss you out, tell you, get out of here, I'll call the police. Go do something like that. Prove to yourself. Make a statement. In all things you have approved yourselves to be clear in this matter. Um, to the writer of this letter right here, don't write me again, please. Okay? If you are involved in child pornography or some other kind of a thing, I don't want to hear from you. Um, you don't have to contact me. All right? uh, I've known preachers and the people will come in and they'll bring all kinds of smut in there and tell about all their sexual relationships. You don't need to defile other people with your perverted problems. All right? I don't want to hear kind of stuff like this. You say, what if I get victory over it? Then I'll, we'll talk about it in heaven. Okay? You know, one of the problems with this ministry, just to be real straight with you, and any ministry too, let's just be you know, fair about this. It's not just internet ministry. It's all ministries. And that is that there's this thing of, I just want to be accountable to the man of God. No, you need to be accountable to Jesus Christ. And you be your own man. You go out and you get victory. You examine yourself, whether you're in the faith, you say, well, I molested as a child. I need to move forward and not use my bitterness to make some other child's life miserable. Are you allowing devil spirits into your life? What about the process of sanctification? Have I been taking it serious enough? Have I been saved? How long have I been saved? That kind of a thing. And replacing porn addiction with godly addictions. You have to do that type of a thing. Well, then I can come prove myself to you. I don't want to hear about it. I really don't want to hear about it. You know, I've had young men, I've had guys come to me and they say, brother, what do you think I should do about this? I give them advice and they just cling on to me just like this little leech, just, just sucking the life out of me. Brother, I have a problem. Oh, brother, could you please come to me? Could you please tell me about, I don't know how to do this. What should I do? Go away, leech. And I've had other brethren that they come to me and they say, brother, what do you think I should do about this? I give them advice, pray with them, talk with them. And they say, I think you're right, brother. Thank you. Shake hands, and I never hear from them again. Good. Good. I hope that they turned out. I won't know till eternity, more than likely. That's the way it should be. I don't want a bunch of little leech followers just always coming after me. Brother, brother, I have to tell you the latest. Oh, I have to... <sighs> Get something done from the Lord. Well, I'm struggling with pornography, and I need you to help me. I'm not helping you. That's between you and God. I've given the solutions. I've given them. You don't want to listen? Then uh, enjoy the fires of hell because that's where you're headed. I'm not going to be okay with the sins and things. I mean, you know, again, I've read uh, books from the 1800s and things. I mean, the, the churches back then, you, you know, any church, you Lutheran, Baptist, Presbyterian, whatever, um, Catholic, they're always, you know, just satanic and evil. They do all kinds of stuff. Then you just go into the priest and confess it and you know, whatever. There's been molestation going on for, you know, centuries with the Catholic Church. So they don't count, but, you know, that's just a satanic cult. But uh, among the Protestants, they were rough. <laughs> I mean, they'd rip your hide off. They, you know, the Methodists, if you can believe this, back in the uh, 1800s, early 1800s, they would kick you out of the church if you had frills on your clothing as a man. If you had any kind of lace or any kind of a little bit somewhat effeminate looking clothing, they'd pick you up. They'd, they'd say, get that guy back there. There's a, there's a ruffled dandy. That's what they called him. There's a ruffled dandy back there. Young man, get up and throw that man out of here. He's disturbing the service. Look at him and he's effeminate. Pick him up and throw him out. And they would pick the guy up, go out. And if there's a pond, there was a story the one time, Peter Cartwright's book. They picked this ruffled dandy up, took him out, and he's screaming, oh, don't do this, don't do this. And they took the guy, threw him into the water with his fine clothing on, his little ruffled lace collar or whatever else. And the guy was probably a pretty decent man and whatever. But that's how Christians were in the past. 
Oh, but now we should just be tolerant of perverts and everything in our midst, amidst and everything. I, you know what? I thank God that I don't have a church building. I'll say it again for whatever, how many times this is. Um, I thank God because you can't trust people coming to these church buildings. They're filled with perverts. Jeffrey Dahmer was going to church while messing around and things. He took some of his boyfriends to church before he killed them and ate them. Active churchgoer. So, um, am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? I don't have any tolerance. None. Uh, on this issue. Because I've put it out for years. It's like the Bible version issue. I had a sister in the Lord correct me the one time very lovingly, very kindly. And she said, Brother Brian, don't make excuses for these people that use the new versions. You could have done that years ago, but now there's been so many. There's been books written, videos made all over the internet. It's free. You can look up the Bible version issue just like that. You can understand it that the King James Bible is God's book and the others aren't. Don't make excuses for them. They are, they are without excuse. You're without excuse out there if you've been struggling with pornography this whole time, unless you've just newly heard of this ministry. Um, unless you just brand new saved and you're struggling over it, okay, got it. You don't, you're not very far along in the process of sanctification. I get it. But uh, if you've been watching this ministry for years and you've been struggling with it and you're getting into child pornography, um, please go away. Okay? So that's going to be it. Um, thank you for watching. Uh, I will not compromise on this issue. Ever. King James Video Ministries has been faithfully preaching and teaching from God's Word since 2008. Our YouTube channel has never been monetized and we do not accept money from the lost world because this would violate the scriptures. King James Video Ministries is supported by saved brethren in accordance with 1 Timothy chapter 5 verses 17 through 18. If you have been blessed by our videos, we would ask that you prayerfully consider supporting this ministry financially. You can donate online by visiting www.kingjamesvideoministries.com or by sending a check or money order to King James Video Ministries, P.O. Box 214, Patton, Maine, 04765. Thank you to all who donate to this ministry, and we pray for the Lord's blessing in your lives.